Well, in the time that the lionesses were hunting, I decided to see, oh, if I could have other eyes, but it's not working very well at all. So we just decided to put little balls of scrub hair dung there, and I have no idea why. We were just messing around in Senzo, and I thought it would be quite funny. But the reason I found these little scrub hair balls is because you guys were asking whether or not we see signs of scrub hairs, and we most certainly do, and these are the best signs that you can find of them. So often we won't find tracks, but you will find their little dung balls. Now you'll notice that their dung balls look very different to that of all the other animals. They take on a much lighter color and that is because these little dung balls are defecated and then re-eaten and then basically processed once more. So every little bit of nutrients and moisture is sucked out of them and that's why you end up with this white. Also they feed off grasses and not leaves and plant material that has lots of tannins in it and so then you don't get that more sort of coppery stain to it. The other reason why I always look for these and this is a habit that I've had since I have first started doing bushwalks and I was taught this is that these things are the best things in the world to test wind. When you walk around in these areas and a lot of the guys will carry ash bags because ash bags work quite well but for me scrub hair has always been the best thing and the the reason why is because I'm going to move now because I don't want this in my mouth. But you squeeze it like this and it will break apart. Then all you do with your fingers is just slowly but surely let it go. And because of how fine the grass is, it gives you a really good indication of where the wind blows. So they're the best things to carry around in your pockets. The problem is I often forget them in my pockets and then my washing goes to the laundry and it comes back then and there's just grass all over the place in the pockets, which is a bit weird. Right, let's get rid of that. The other thing is that we do have in this section over here now, since I don't know how we're going to find it because I've lost it altogether now, there was a spider, which is one of my favorite spiders. At this stage of the year, we don't see too many insects. And so our spider is... A nice find. It is a tropical tent web spider, and you can't see the web so nicely now because the angle of the light isn't quite right where we are. But the spider is sitting just in its little tent. You can see the slight curvature upwards of the pitch of the tent, and they sit in there and they often will build their tents basically on the edge of a game path. So they build it just in with these spiky thorn trees which allows them protection from the birds. But as animals walk on pathways around this tree, so they're kicking up insects into that web. And that's why the web is shaped the way that it is. Because as insects fly up, if the web was built any other way, it would be quite difficult. But because the web is built facing downwards, the insects fly up and they're going to then get caught in that tent effectively. You'll then see that they'll run down, grab it, inject the venom, spin it up, and then feed off it as the venom takes place. But what's also really cool about this particular one, and, and I think they're eggs, I can't see you very nicely, but just below, and it's a bit of a tricky one, but below the spider to the right is two little sacks, and I think those two little sacks are the egg sacks for this particular one. It could also be insects. It's difficult to see because it's completely against the light at the moment and the wind is howling, so it's making it move quite a bit, but they look like little egg sacks, which is really cool. Right, now, we've seen our spider